I um, have been looking into this question of, of Shambhala for quite a while, ever since uh, I wrote a book in 1999 called The Atomic Christ, which was about Franklin Delano Roosevelt's quest for the Holy Grail in Mongolia in 1933. He, along with his two-term Secretary of Agriculture, Henry A. Wallace, and a third person, a Russian mystic and painter named Nicholas Rurik, reformed the archetypal trio of the three wise men and sent Rurik to Shambhala in search of what's called the Chintamani Stone, or the wish-fulfilling jewel. In Buddhism, the Chintamani stone is the stone that produces the rainbow body of light. It's believed to have been of extraterrestrial origin, possibly coming from Sirius, and is, the, is really the basis for the Holy Grail stories, as well as the, the stories of the Philosopher's Stone, the stone of transmutation. So quite possibly when we're talking about Shambhala, and quite probably, we're actually talking about the realm out of which these beings emerged. Now, uh, when Rurik went to Mongolia, he was seeking Mount Meru, which is actually the access point or portal to Shambhala, or the realm of, of these immortal beings. In my opinion, uh, these beings are their intention is to assist us in our own transformation into celestial beings. Because once you attain this, this level of ascension, you, you become a, a, a wholly compassionate being. And you couldn't possibly have it within your heart to want to uh, in any way harm another, another being. That's just part of this, this whole process. And as, and that's why I believe that, this teaching is so important at this time because as we all embrace our, our higher consciousness abilities, we, we recognize that we're all one and that love truly is the only path that any of us can walk. And therefore, when we're on this path, there's only one way forward, and that's to be a being of total love and, and total light. Um, can you share the image of the Buddha and Pata that you mentioned uh, we could use? Yeah, it's uh, it's this one right here. I, I highly recommend, you know, again, a screenshot. On, on my cell phone, I uh, I have a, a screenshot of Padmasambhava. You know, the average person looks at their cell phone 200 times a day. That's That's what we're being told. I hope I don't do it that many times, but I know I do it quite a few times. And so every time I'm looking at Padmasambhava in his rainbow light body, I, I have a backstory of understanding that tells me that because he's a guru, an avatar, Pata can manifest through an image. This is fundamental understanding of how the Tibetans believe the rainbow light body vibration is transmitted. It's done through paintings, tankas, such as what we're looking at here, which was gifted to me by the wind horse here in, in London, which is a, a, a wonderful online resource for Tibetan tankas, the wind horse foundation. They became aware of my work and, and offered these, this tanka to me as a gift to, to assist in, the, in this teaching. But behind it is this powerful idea that the image of Padmasambhava is an actually a sacred mirror. It's an icon, a portal through which the vibration of Padmasambhava can manifest and transmit to us the, the holy vibration of the rainbow body of light. So that's why I highly encourage people to, to utilize it as an open eye meditation. And I would encourage you uh, here to do the same. So, so thank you for asking about that. On the Mac, it's, it's almost impossible to acquire a, spring sh a screenshot. Well, just take your cell phone up to the uh, screen and, and uh, and take a picture of them would be one way you could do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jody says she looks forward to the, the session uh, with about Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Yeah, you're you're going to absolutely love this. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's one of the most profound uh, areas of research that I've been doing. And I'm so excited to be able to present that material to you and show how Akhenaten and Nefertiti 
Jesus and Mary Magdalene, Francis and Claire of Assisi, all embody this ascension teaching. And you're going to be very surprised, I think, by the, the common thread that is woven through uh, their life stories. It's, it, I, it's almost as if they're reincarnations of one another. I wouldn't go that, so, go that far, but we will definitely see how they all embodied uh, the, the same uh, profound teaching. 